Good morning, everyone. I am Robert from Jobs 180. And this is Jobs 180's Marketing Me Live. So today's program is done for and in collaboration with RTU. And well, thank you for joining. I know that this is actually our second session with RTU. Hopefully, nandong kayo nung first. And well, if wala, pwede niyo naman panoorin yung last session nung in our Facebook page kasi nakapost yung live namin recorded version sa FB. Anyway, this is our second and we will be having our third later on next week. And before we proceed, I would just like to invite you to join us for a short prayer. Once again, thank you for coming. And we would know we would want to know our viewers better. And I think familiar na kayo sa aming usual na ginagawa. Kasi nakikita ko na ang mga comments natin kasi ang hinihingi namin ay ang inyong name, course. And uh, napansin ko hindi nyo dinadagdagdag din na rin ang year you graduated or the year that you would be graduating. So thank you very much. I'm guessing to mga marunong na nagko-comment na dyan ay nandun ng first na session natin. So, thank you very much for coming again. So, once again, this is done and in collaboration with RTU and this would not have been possible if it were not for the help of your school officials. That being said, we would like to invite Engineer Dolores Cruz. She is your College Secretary of the College of Engineering, Architecture, and Technology and concurrent as Department Head of Computer Engineering and Information Technology Program. Once again, Engineer Dolores Cruz. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Hi, ma'am. Good morning. Yes, Good morning. I believe you have a message prepared for our viewers. And yes, yes. Uh, the floor is yours. You can start your message now. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, RTU. Good day. I want to take this opportunity to greet the RTU community. A very happy 51st Foundation Anniversary. We are very blessed to have gone this far. Congratulations to all of us. Indeed, the 51 years of RTU existence will not be realized if not because of the joint effort and love of the RTU administration headed by our president, Dr. Maria Eugenia M. Yanko, our faculty members, administrative personnel, students, and our stakeholders, including our industry partners. Mr. Kim Chua, you are already part of this institution for the how many years that you have partnered with the RTU Cooperative Education Center. Happy anniversary to you too. Salute to Jobs 180. Today, despite our distance, because we are still in the general community quarantine, we will not be hampered by this pandemic. Life must go on. Learning should never stop. In the second session of the series of webinars for the RTU students entitled Marketing Me, there are interesting topics and useful guides which will be shared by our guests who are experts in their own right. I admonish all those with us via FB Live to pay attention and harness this knowledge to become part of our lives. And we are fortunate to get all of this for free. 
lastly, shout out to our COE director, Engineer Dong Matias, to my fellow COE coordinators, and of course, to our be beloved COE students. God bless and keep safe. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Dolly. As mentioned, we appreciate as well na partner nyo kami and that we are glad to be doing this na series pa nga to, hindi lang to isa para sa inyo because we are a partner for you. So thank you, yes. ma'am. Thank you, Robert. See you soon. And as mentioned by Ma'am Dolly, we will be having interesting topics for today. So I would like to show them to you. Daanan natin ang mga topics natin for today. You could see sa screen, uh, Marketing Me Live at RTU. This is our second session. The topics for today are communication skills, and we would have a speaker from Transcom. Skills companies look for when hiring fresh grads from Hindujag Global Solutions or HDS, and after graduation checklist from Emerson. And well, alam niyo na pero dun sa mga first time natin makasama ang flow natin. I represent each speaker for their topic. And then at the end, magkakaroon tayo ng short Q&A. So while nag-talk si speaker, please comment your questions dyan sa ating comment box. Again, meron tayong team na nagmamonitor ng ating comment. Okay, so let's move on to our first topic. And I would like to introduce our first speaker. He is Mr. Jun Abo, VP for Talent Acquisition and Recruitment Digital Marketing. Jun, Sir Jun Fabulsi, born in July, is known as the HR and Talent Acquisition Community as the Fairy Job Father, who grants job wishes and makes career dreams come true. A wonder worker who has done amazing ramp up and business expansion feats through a smart way of capitalizing both passionate human talents and leading technology. And I would like to introduce again Sir Jun, VP for Talent Acquisition and Recruitment of digital marketing. Sir Jun, are you there? Yep, I am here. Thank you for good that. Uh, very Good afternoon good to the fairy job afternoon. father. <laughs> Transcom's fairy job father is here. So, sir, you will oh, thank be you. talking about communication skills. And as yes. mentioned earlier, we have a Q&A shortly after. And we are glad that you are here. And I will be leaving now. But first, can we test your screen share? Okay. Just to uh, make sure that we can issue later. Go ahead. Um, use the second screen. Uh, I'm already casting. Yes, it is here. And it's full screen. Siya, so thank you, sir. You could okay. start. I will be seeing you again later for our Q&A. Cool. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, very wonderful and accurate introduction. It should be wonderful and accurate because I'm going to read it and read it. And... To the RPU community, uh, thank you for having me and happy 51st uh, foundation. Uh, and um, I am truly very honored to, to be here with you today. Um, I'm actually here to talk about uh, communication skills and the importance of communication skills. Nakatuwa kasi when I was told that I was going to be talking about communication skills, um, I have... Um, a, a particular personal story that I'd like to share, but um, I'll get through that as we go through uh, the presentation. You know what? Um, majority of jobs uh, require employees to have good communication skills so that they can express themselves and in, in a very positive and clear manner, both when speaking in people and, of course, also writing. And y you know what? Communication is one of the most... Uh, important ingredient for career success. And hindi lang career success. If you want to set up your business, you want to grow your business, guess what? You need to have excellent communication skills. But the problem is the phrase good communication skills is a term so overused that it's usually difficult uh, to pinpoint what it actually means, right? Sinasabi lang galing niya magsalita, but what are the components? Uh, how did that person actually become very good eh, in terms of uh, communicating? Demonstrating strong and excellent communication skills is all about being able to convey information. 
to others in a simple and clear way. When you say something, what you meant to say, nakakarating doon sa taong kausap mo. At that other person, because he clearly understood what you're trying to say and ask, is able to respond in a similar way, right? Hindi yung tipong pag tinanong ka ng girlfriend mo, uh, o oh, saan mo gustong kumain? Ang sagot mo e, eh, bahala ka na. E that pag napili niyang ibang restaurant, tatanong mo, bakit itong napili mo? That's not a very good and clear communication. Um, communication involves distribution of messages very clearly and concisely, and it allows you to connect with your audience. And good communication is about understanding instructions, acquiring new skills, making requests, asking questions, and relaying information with ease. So let's get started. Um, let me get started by sharing with you first about who uh, the company I represent. Um, so Transcom, by the numbers, we are a global organization. Uh, 27,000 employees worldwide. Uh, financially, we are strong with 541 million euros in terms of revenue. Um, because we're a global organization, we provide uh, multiple languages, 33 languages, in fact, European, American, and Asian languages. Uh, we do 1.5 million interactions with our customers every day. Um, and in the Philippines, if you look at the Philippines, we have 11 sites in the Philippines. Um, so the the one here is in uh, Tiendesitas. Uh, this is one of our biggest service delivery centers. Uh, we also have um, sites in uh, Ayala 30th, which is along Meralco Avenue. And then we have our uh, regional headquarters along Edsa Mandaluyo. And then we have a mega site in Bacolod, uh, where we have a campus site set up, four buildings. And then in Iloilo, we are there as well. And of course, we are in Davao. We have around uh, five sites in Davao uh, that, uh, that's currently operating. Uh, so again, we're across uh, three major islands. So uh, again, just uh, a recap, uh, I'm June. Uh, I'm uh, Transcom's fair job father, and I'm here to talk about the importance of communication skills. Okay, let me get started with a story. So the story that I wanted to share is merong dalawang mag-best friend, si Basha at si Popoy. Right? The, the two best friends were walking after attending a mass. And si Basha wonders, sabi niya, I, I wonder if it's all right to smoke while I'm praying. So si Popoy replied, why don't you ask the priest? So si Basha said, okay, I'll do that. Uh, and he goes up to the priest and asks, uh, Father, may I smoke while I pray? But the priest said, no, 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 no. Um, that is disrespectful. And that is disrespectful to our faith and to our religion. So si Basha goes back to Popoy and tells Popoy, wala eh. So the priest said that that's, that's a no. It's disrespectful. And si Popoy, hmm, wait, let me think. I'm not surprised. The way you communicated is wrong. You ask actually, alam mo, uh, Basha, you asked the wrong question. Here, let me try. And then lumapit siya sa pare. And then he asked the father, Father, may I pray while I smoke? To which the priest eagerly responded, By all means, my son. By all means. So you see, the moral of this story is that you, the way you communicate, the response that you get will really depend on how you ask your questions and how you communicate. Right? Sabi nga ng uh, dad ko, it's um, any problem, big or small, within a family always seems to start with bad communication. Always, always seems to start with bad communication. And that's also if you look back in school and when you start working, all of those problems, whether big or small, usually if you look at the root cause, it's bad communication, an issue. So the ang tanong ngayon is how do you then build a strong English foundation, right? How do you then ensure that when uh, you start communicating, it has a very solid foundation. So let me share with you a couple of tips that I learned growing up and I, well, I'm still practicing yeah, even now. 
um, first first things first, it's you expand your vocabulary. So when you expand your vocabulary, you try to learn new words every day. So you see, learning new words day in and day out is a good way to widen your vocabulary. You you the key here is you need to commit to a suitable target. Pwede siyang three days or uh, three words a day, or it can be 10 daily words a day. Well, if you look at it, even if you go with just one word a day at the end of the year, you would have 365 new words uh, that you would know of. Write the number down to remind yourself frequently that you have uh, and uh, to remind yourself frequently of the new word, and then you can then start practicing it. And if you have a learning partner, share it with your learning partner so that, again, both of you can check on your progress. Um, I guess another advice for you would be um, good resources. You have good resources for words like the news, songs, and TV shows. Yan, pwede nyo gamitin yan. And again, depending on your daily habit, if you love listening to music, ito ah, if you love listening to music, pay close attention to the lyrics and take note of the words that you do not know. Because songs often contain a lot of the useful vocabulary, phrases, and expressions. Therefore, there are it's a great way to learn English. And you can do the same thing with YouTube videos. The, the second way of expanding your vac vocabulary is learn words in phrases and in chunks. What does this mean? You see, impor it's important that you learn words in groups. For example, instead of referring to wine, beer, tea, and so on as just that, you can look at it as beverage. Look at those beverages as a glass of wine, or a pint of beer, or a cup of tea, or a pot of coffee. You can also benefit from learning words that are related. So, for example, the moon has four phases uh, during their lunar month, right? May crescent, may gibbon, waxing, and waning. It's more important that you learn all four words at the same time. So you group them together in sequence so it's easier to remember, right? Now, the, the, the second one is how do you then improve your communication? Um, it's how you improve your pronunciation, so part of communication skills is pronunciation, how you enunciate your words. Kasi marami nga kayong alam na salita, marami nga kayong alam na words, but if you fail to say them correctly, you will not be understood. In fact, aasa rin ka pa, talo ka pa, right? That seems like a waste of time spending remembering all of those words. So learn to pronounce them correctly. So how do you do that? When using online dictionaries, uh, such as the uh, um, Macmillan and Merriam-Webster dictionary, make use of my little speaker dun eh. And that would give you usually how the words are being pronounced. Um, there are English pronunciation tutorials on YouTube, right? Um, or listen to podcasts. So as you listen carefully to the words and learn how it is being pronounced properly. And... When you're ready to try, ready to try something more challenging, try out the tongue twisters. Nakatuwa, because there's a lot of available tongue twisters uh, online. Um, pero piliin yung mabuti yung tongue twisters nyo. Kasi if yung tongue twister nyo is yung tipong minikaniko ng mekaniko ang makina ni Monica, that's not going to help you, right? So try tongue twisters like how much wood could a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood. He would chuck, he would wood as much as he could and chuck as much wood as a wood chuck would if a wood chuck could chuck wood, right? Tongue twisters. Nakatuwa. If you practice your tongue twisters, you learn to enunciate and pronounce your words more clearly and it's a fun way of doing it, right? Now, another tip for you is uh, learn the proper flow, the natural flow of English. And why is this important? Um, it's important because, uh, admittedly, as Filipinos, learning the English language, medyo dehado tayo. And bakit tayo dehado? When, when we were growing up, when we were learning the Tagalog and the Filipino language, the Tagalog or the Filipino language is heavily syllabicated. 
And what does that mean? Big word, syllabicated. Syllabicated means um, we emphasize on our vowels, a, e, i, o, u, right? So when we are learning words, we try to syllabicate our pronunciation. Bahay, kubo, kahit, munti, tatay, nanay, right? And when we started learning putting that in sent into sentences, we again syllabicate our sentences like, saan ka pupunta? So when we then learn the English language, the way we then communicate, the way we put together our uh, sentences is again heavily syllabicated. We don't have the nat natural flow of uh, English. Now, being able to say the English words correctly is great, but the secret, and that's ah, the secret to speaking fluently lies in the flow of the sentences. So whether you read a piece of poetry or listen to songs or watch a, a very good uh, TV series, pay attention to the following. One, linking. Notice how native speakers would normally link their words, uh, joining two sounds, making it sound as one. So for example, yung I am, sasabihin nilang I am, right? He will, he'll. And they have, they'll say Dave. And do not is don't. The second, the second advice is stressing. There are syllables that you need to stress in a word and stress words in a sentence, right? And the third one is, of course, the rhythm, right? The rhythm when you are speaking in English. The rhythm is the overall result of stress, constructions, and linking. It's the ups and downs when you're talking, right? But when, when, I, when I started my presentation, there's usually words that I normally stress, right? Like that one. Um, and there are uh, sing a way of sing-songing when I pronounce my sentence and I put in my structure. So how do you improve this? Uh, techniques to improve your English and speaking skills? Again, practice, 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 right? So best way of doing it when I practice, I usually look for a rap song. And then so growing up, uh, growing up, uh, that was part of my daily exercise. I'd look for a rap song and see which ones I could then imitate so as I can then get the proper flow. For example, all right, stop, collaborate and listen. Ice is back with a brand new invention. Something grabs a hold of me tightly. Flow like a harpoon daily and nightly. Will it ever stop yo? I don't know. Turn off the lights and I'll glow, right? So in your case, ano ito mga mga bagong rap, hindi yung mga tipong uh, uh, tito rap na tulad na sinabi ko. But again, it takes practice. So you sound natural and you sound confident. So the next one that I'm going to share to you on how you improve your English speaking skills, it's um, speech shadowing. So what is speech shadowing? In a nutshell, it's all about imitation, right? You listen to how native speakers say something and you try to copy it. You pick your favorite video with subtitles, right? Make sure that it's something that you enjoy watching because you will. You listen to it many times and then listen to the video once and read the subtitle. You get a good grasp in terms of the general content and flow. And while you're playing it, complete the next step. You imitate, right? You imitate. So as uh, you become then the narrator, sentence by sentence, play, listen, pause, speak, and then optional. Gusto nyo record para makita nyo kung uh, how you do it uh, and how you are performing and how you are improving. Copy the speech pattern as best as you can. And if you choose to record your practice, you can compare yours with the original, right? Kiling, um, the other advice that I have for you is actually self-talk, right? Self-talk is you talk to yourself in English uh, loudly. It can be anything from a suggestion like, Shall we go get a glass of water? Where do you want to eat? Or a reminder that I need to do a load of laundry today. Or alternatively, you can pick a book and read a couple of pages out loud. And this exercise might slow down your reading, but it will speed up your speaking skills. And growing up, um, uh, I, I wasn't very confident. 
um, I wasn't very good at interacting with other people. And I'll share with you later why. So I ended up usually spending my free time, especially my recess and my lunch time sa library. Because again, I wasn't confident. I was scared of people. Um, and because I was around books a lot, I, I gravitated towards learning uh, to love to read. So I, uh, I read a lot of books and that's how I started practicing my communication skills. I started reading. I started when I started appreciating what I was reading, I started reading out loud and I started practicing. Um, the next advice I have for you is, of course, uh, think in English. Um, what does that mean? When you think in English, if you already think in English, it takes less time to produce on res or respond in everyday conversations. No translation needed. Usually, because what happens is when someone, when a native speaker talks to us in English, we listen to it, we convert it in our head because, again, English is our second language, right? And then we respond. If you're not used to that uh, sequence and process, it takes time and you would normally end up before responding, um, mm, uh, teka, 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 uh, so and dami nothing feelers. Now, a good way to start thinking in English is, again, you write it down, um, you keep your, you express your daily thoughts in English, right? It does not have to be perfect. And Daniel, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's more about getting your thoughts in English with less and less effort. And again, practice makes perfect. The second one is you retell a story in English, right? Take the challenge of a uh, step further by retelling a story in English. You retrace other people's line of thoughts in your own words. And this one, actually, this is a, a very good conversation uh, starter. When you're talking to someone that you've met for the first time, when they introduce you, you, themselves, usually it's a, it's a good style that you then recap what you said. So as it shows that you understood what they are saying and you know where they're coming from, and then you respond, right? So you retell the story in English. Now, um, it always goes back to practice, practice, and practice, right? Why do we keep practicing? Because it's through practicing that we improve, right? Practice makes perfect. Sabi nga nila, di ba? So if you speak English frequently, some people might think that they do not have the opportunity to practice and speak in English because they don't live in the U.S., or in an English-speaking country, and you're probably thinking the environment natin is if you practice in English, pagtatawa pa. If you try speaking in English, sasabi nila ang konya naman ito, ang trying hard naman ito. But guess what? If you don't mind the external noise, if you don't mind the criticism, yung pangaasal, you keep on practicing and continue developing. You will eventually get to that stage that you will become comfortable. It will become natural when it comes to speaking in English. So what are the different ways that you can further ex uh, further improve your communication skills and further practice? So ways to keep improving. First one, it's participate in public speaking events. If you have a, a debating community, right, or a debating team, join your debating team. That's a one good way in order to improve your communication skills. Um, if you're not comfortable in public events, public speaking events, how about just picking a practice partner, right? A practice partner can help you remain committed and at the same time keep you uh, in, in terms of uh, honest with your goals. And last but not the least, it's it's now the fourth industrial revolution and damning apps are available out there. Um, just looking at the apps, uh, I'm actually very envious of you guys because at, uh, at the uh, tip of your finger, you already have the means in order to improve your communication skills to a very fast rate. And uh, ano ba yung mga apps na available sa inyo? And it's free, eh? Nandanyo, it's free. It's you have my suggestions would be Duolingo, you have Quiz Your English, you have Hello Talk, and then you also have Grammarly, right? So, ang daming pwede niyong gawin. Um, I keep going back to saying practice, practice, practice. Why? Because practice is not something you do once you are good. Practice, it is something that you do 
in order to make you good. So before I wrap this up, let me share with you a, a personal story. Um, I grew up as uh, in a large family, actually five brothers in total. Uh, and uh, of that five brothers, I'm a middle child. And shout out to lot of my middle child, Jane. Um, growing up in uh, in a family of achievers wasn't easy because my brothers were physically gifted. They were mentally, academically gifted as well. Uh, so I grew up elementary, high school. I didn't have a voice because usually, pag magsasalta ako, kasama ko yung mga kuya ko, sasabi nila, na junjun wag bata ka pa. Or if I'm with my younger brothers, thinking na I'm the el- uh, eldest here among my younger brothers, makikinig sila sa akin, sabi nila, hindi kuya, di ba kami naiintindihan, tanda ka na eh. Right? So I-, I didn't know kung saan ako lulugar. It didn't help that my brothers were academically gifted. So in school, um, people would always say, oh, kapatid mo si ganyan, kapatid mo si ganyan. So probably ganyan ka din. Right? So I was depressed. Um feeling ko kung na-diagnose ako early on, uh, may kita na na that uh, I also had anxiety attacks. Um, and that's why, like what I shared earlier, uh, ang tambayan ko was library because I wasn't comfortable with people. And because I was exposed uh, to an environment na maraming libro, that's when I started reading. When I started reading, I started mimicking yung mga character sa libro. And when I started mimicking and practicing, that's when I noticed my communication skills started improving. Nung una, inasara ko ng mga kapatid ko. Sabi niya, oh, arte mo naman, pa English english ka pa. Um, and e- 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 even my, my parents would often joke na, uh, bakit ganyan ako magsalita? But I kept on persisting because I realized that one of the things that would set me apart from my brothers, it's how I express myself. And how I express myself when I clearly express myself clearly and concisely, right, in fluent English, that's one way of establishing and setting myself apart from everyone else. So I started doing that. Um, and because I started, I was able to communicate and express my feelings clearly, um, I was started being given different roles, like in class president, when I moved into college. I was uh, very confident when it comes to speaking and I started becoming part of the debating team, class president, and eventually when I graduated, graduated I became uh, the student council uh, president for my college. Um, when I started working, uh, na ito, this is the reason why I'm sharing this with you. Uh, when I applied for a job, and this is for uh, Bank of America, and I took up accountancy, and I was waiting in line with all of the other candidates. And I started chatting with them. And yung mga kasama ko nag apply for the same job. There may magna cum laude, may cum laude, so lahat sila mga may laude. And I look at my CV, and I was average, right? I, I look at my grades, it was average. Minsan pasang awa. And yet, when I went into the interview, because I was able to... Uh, clearly express what I'm thinking. I was clearly able to express my strengths and weaknesses. I was clearly able to communicate my plans and why I would like to join the organization. Uh, guess what? I got the job. And my communication skills has been the one that helped me make that leap from yung timid, anxious, nervous, depressed na bata to who I am right now. And it's an ongoing uh, journey for me. Um, the tips I've shared with you, I am still doing it, uh, and I am still practicing, practicing, practicing. So that's it. Again, everyone, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Junabo. I am Transcom's fairy job father, and sana may natutunan kayo today. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Jun. I like na marami lang ways to do this to improve on this yung creative side then lalabas lalo na yung i saw na pwede tayo gumawa ng rap or try rap songs i think that's the first time i've heard na itong tip na to but it makes sense so pwede to subukan ng ating mga viewers okay so uh, let's go to our q and a sir june i have here a question about answering interview questions 
what if yung questions are purely in English? So communication skills kasi is part, I guess, is yung how they communicate during the interviews. So what if ang interviewer ay purely English or Taglish or what? Paano tayo magko-communicate para hindi masyado stiff, awkward or what? Well, actually, eh, wag nyo na tanong. Kasi expect that the interview will be in English. Right? Expect that the interview will be in English. Depende na lang, ha? Kung anong position ang ina-applyan ninyo. If the position you're applying for doesn't expect you to be in the front lines or to communicate with customers, then uh, I, I think it's okay to speak in Taglish or Tagalog. But if I were you, put yourself in a mindset that all of the interviews that you're going to be attending is going to be in English. And that is why ngayon pa lang, ngayon pa lang, start preparing and practicing. Now, if you want to prepare for an interview and it's going to be in English, my suggestion would be, again, ang swerte nyo nga eh, go to Google, right? And there are sample interview questions and even sample answers. Take a look at it. Start practicing yung mga sagot ninyo. Um, customize your answer so as it would fit a specific question. And, you know, ito ang sikreto ng mga interviewers. Ha? Yung mga interviewers, yung mga tinatanong nila, they're also also getting that from the internet. Right? <laughs> so, alam niyo na kung saan laki nukuha yun. You can already start preparing in advance. Right? So, when you go to your interview, you, you know you're already prepared and you're confident, ah, na-practice ko to. Kaya ko sagutin to. Okay, so thank you, sir. So ating mga viewers, yan na, prepare na kayo. Yan ang expectations niya dapat coming in. So talaga important na mag-practice tayo. So next question, you mentioned earlier yung what you did to practice despite yung pang-aasar ng mga tao. I think it's very common. Lots of us yeah. uh, have had this experience kung saan nagsusubok ka tapos wow, ano ba naman yan? Nagsusubok ka, ano ba yeah. naman? Saan ang galing yan? So ano further na pwede nyo i-mabigay sa ating mga viewers bukod sa um, ignoring them. <laughs> na, so, ako, for me, ang, uh, it, it came to a point na nung una kong uh, I started doing it, I was really affected because I look up to my brothers uh, and they would uh, they, they would be the first one na asa rin ako. Um, but it came to a point na I, I really wanted to improve I really wanted to grow. I wanted to get out of my shell. And I realized that it, this is the one of the ways for me to really bloom and get out of my shell. So it, it's actually a test of your perseverance uh, as well as your uh, willingness mo to grow. Um, if you allow the external noise to distract you or derail you, then that's on you. Tandaan nyo. No one can do or say anything na hindi mo gusto. Right? Pag sinabi nila, you have the choice, you have the choice to ignore them or listen to them. Right? Filter nyo. All of those criticisms, all of yung pangasab na yan, external noise lang yan. Filter them out. Right? Just like how you use filters sa selfies nyo. Filter them out. So as all you're listening to are the positive things. Right, the reinforcements. Uh, keep doing it. Keep trying. Keep improving, and filter out all of those uh, distractions. You know, by the way, for a katulong sa inyo mga viewers is that dito nga sa pag filter out is remember yung motivation niyo. In the first place, kung bakit niyo nga sinubukan kung uh, improve or expand yung vocabulary, speak in English more. Yeah, balikan yun lang ang yung motivation for doing it. Okay, next question, sir. You mentioned kanina that communication skills hindi lang purely verbal kasi nga you also communicate sa true writing. Anong tips earlier that you could apply in writing as well? Um, writing actually, it's uh, and I shared this uh, in the talk, um, it's if you uh, maintain a journal or a diary and you just start writing your daily interactions or your daily thoughts, right? Kung mapapansin ninyo, when you start with the journaling, yung mga first entries ninyo, may iksi lang. I had a lousy day, nakipag-away ako, inasal ako, or whatever, right? But as you progress, um, as you start and continue to 
um, right, you'd notice if you look back at your earlier entries versus yung mga recent entries ng journaling ninyo, yung, uh, you'd know that you're starting to apply the words that you've learned on a daily basis uh, and then um, and then include it in your journaling. So that's one way of improving your written skills, right? Um, when when you try to write, you again, you keep on practicing. Okay, so viewers, don't afraid talaga to start small. Again, dito nga sa writing, sa journal niya, kahit paunti-unti. Later on, you would not be uh, realizing na sa after ilang weeks, pahaba na pala ng pahaba ang inyong nilalagay sa journal, gano'n na kayo ka-comfortable doing. So thank you, sir. I think these are our questions for today for you. To our viewers to know more about Transcom Worldwide Philippines Incorporated, you could go to jobs180.com slash transcom. You could see here yung kanilang background sa company and a few of their job openings. So thank you very much, Sir Jun. Hopefully, we could have you sa future webinars natin, whether you would give the same talk or different na topic naman. So thank you, Sir. See you soon. Thank you. Have a nice day. And uh, happy 51st Foundation Day to the RPU community. Thank you, sir. Now, to our viewers, I believe that we will be playing a video. This video is about making your resume link for those na hindi nakasama sa atin ng first na ating session. Itong resume link is what you could use to pag-apply nyo. And para naman dun sa nandun ng first session, and well, I guess pa refresher lang kung anong gagawin nyo sa resume link if hindi nyo pa nagagawa. So, here's the video. Step 1. Register. Go to www.jobs180.com and click register now. In choosing your resume link, use your full name so that it looks professional and is easy to recall by potential employers. And fill out the other information needed. Register, go to your email address and validate your jobs180.com account to activate. Step 2. Complete your resume link. When creating your resume link, make sure to complete your personal and contact information, your profile picture, and your cover photo. You can also put your objectives, work options, work experience, certifications, achievements, skills and languages, references, and portfolio. Your resume link also features different themes and a cover photo. Step 3. Submit your resume link. If you're qualified, click Submit Resume Link or you can even share the job vacancy with your friends. You can also apply for jobs outside jobs180.com by sending your resume link through any platform.
register. Complete submit your resume link. So what are you waiting for? Turn your life around by creating your own resume link and applying for your dream job. Okay, so sa ating mga viewers na wala pang resume link, pwede na kayo gumawa nito. At para naman dun sa mga meron na, remind ko lang na don't forget to update it every time may relevant information na magbago. You could go to jobs180.com or sa inyong school site, schools.jobs180.com slash rtu. Kasama to sa banner sa baba, makikita nyo ang Visit your school site. Yan. Pwede kayo pumunta dyan sa school site. Dyan na kayo gumawa ng inyong resume link. And mag-log or mag-log in para ma-update. Okay, so let, let us now move on to our next topic. So naka-isang topic na tayo. May dalawa pa tayo. And to introduce our second speaker, she is a graduate of psychology from De La Salle University, Manila. And she has been in recruitment since 2006 in different industries. May I introduce to you Ms. Ana Margarita Ibarrola, Senior Sourcing Manager from Hinduja Global Solutions or HDS. Good morning, Ms. Ana. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, ma'am. Nice to have you here. So you will be talking about uh, skills companies would look for para sa ating mga fresh grads. And I think this is appropriate dahil marami sa ating viewers today are fresh grads. Yep. So, uh, Let's move forward naman. Let's try yung ating share screen so that you can start. Uh, while Ms. Anne is sharing her screen, remind ko lang ating viewers that please comment your questions sa ating comment box. Meron tayong team na nag-monitor ng ating questions. And thank you na rin sa ating mga viewers. Nakikita ko na dadagdagan pa ang nagko-comment ng kanilang name. Ibig sabihin, siguro na dadagdagan pa tayo. So thank you very much. Sana patuloy madagdagan pa. And para dun sa mga nandito na, makasama namin kayo until the end ng ating session. Pwede pa nga beyond our session. Dahil meron pa tayong isa. Sana nandun uli kayo. Yung mga naglalagay ng uh, names nila. Sana itong names na rin na ito ay makita rin na. Uh, Ms. Anna, okay na po? Or are you having difficulties po sa screen share? Maybe I could help you po? Yeah, it's just open. I'm sorry. Okay, so naglaload na po. Again, sa ating mga viewers, gawa na kayo, kayo ng inyong resume link. And don't forget to update it kapag may magkabagong info na relevant pag ito ay nagbago. And as mentioned kanina, you could go to your school site, schools.jobs180.com slash RTU. Nandiyan ang openings din natin, pati ang mga industry partners nyo naka-prioritize dun sa list. Okay, so Ms. Anna, I could see your screen now. It's a uh, full screen na. I could see it well. Okay naman ang video and audio nyo. So I will be back for the Q&A and the floor is yours. See you later. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Okay, so good morning, guys. Um, again, I'm Anna, um, and I am the Senior Sourcing Manager for HGS. So basically, um, I am here to talk about um, the, the, the skills that uh, companies are looking for uh, in hiring for fresh graduates. So um, to go to better understand um, the discussion, uh, let's just lay out some of the objectives of this discussion. So um, first is to help define what are the essential skills needed to be successful in landing a job? So, ano ba talaga yung, um, kasi uh, it's not just merely um, just finding a job. It's, it's also wanting to know kung if this is the best job to build a career on, right? So, kasi hindi lang naman tayo, parang um, one step lang dapat. So, uh, you also have to foresee ano ba yung uh, career or job na para sa'yo talaga. And then the next is to determine if you have the skills identified to start a career. So as I've mentioned, uh, we're not just uh, here to really identify kung um, fit ka ba for isang task or a job, but it's really more of uh, wanting to know kung meron ka bang uh, capability uh, to start a career in that specific area. Uh, 
Uh, and then the next would be identify ways on how to develop this skill. So if, for example, you're not yet an expert on a certain skill, of course, uh, in order for you to be successful in your chosen career or your chosen path, um, you would need to develop uh, certain skills. So if, for example, wala ka pa nung certain skill na hinahanap namin, uh, it's up to you if you want to develop or, or, to, or you want to inquire those uh, acquire rather those skills. Okay. So moving on, uh, let's just define a couple of um, words to help us understand again the things that we are going to discuss during the discussion. Um, so there tatlo lang naman siya. So career, job, and skill. So career, uh, it's mainly defined as a profession for which one trains and which is undertaken as a permanent calling. So um, to put it simply, siguro, career is more of passion, right? So, ito yung, um, ito yung trabaho na sa tingin mo, dito ka mag-grow. Ito yung tatagal ka talaga. So, that's career. So, kaya nga tinatawag natin na career path, right? Um, next is job. So, job is a paid position of regular employment. So, um, when you say job kasi, uh, siguro to, to put it simply, um, it, it's more of like a task or uh, a certain a certain task that is given to you. Like for example, I have a job for you, ibig sabihin, meron akong gustong ipagawa sa'yo. Right? So as compared to career, again, this is more for long term. Okay? Um, and then the last would be skill. Uh, it's defined as the ability to perform an action with determined results, often within a given amount of time, energy, or both. So, ito yung uh, technically resources mo na internally. So, ito yung capabilities mo as a person to perform a certain job or in building a certain career. Okay? Okay. So, the first skill that I wanted to share uh, is, uh, yung, I think most of the speakers din naman would also um, focus on this, not just because... Uh, ito yung pinaka-familiar kayo. Uh, but I guess it, ito yung pinaka-importante. One of the things that's very important din kung nahanap namin is communication skills. So what is communication skill? Uh, communication is defined as the act of conveying meanings from one entity or group to another through the use of mutually understood, understood signs, symbols, and semiotic rules. Um, Siguro, um, masyadong technical lang din yung mga, mga terms. But um, to put it bluntly, uh, siguro for you to better retain what communication is. So um, basically, ito yung how, how you relay information and how it is being understood. So kung paano mo siya sabihin and paano siya naiintindihan ng receiver. So that's pretty much that's communication skills. So kasi um, I think, uh, most of the folks, when you say communication skill, they would focus on uh, these parameters. So, the pronunciation, uh, the grammar, uh, sentence construction, vocabulary, uh, and so on. So, pero the, the, I think the meat Hello, Miss Anna. Sorry, I think, hello. Sorry, na-mute niyo po yata ang inyong mic. Uh, wala po kasing sound na naririnig from you and yung icon dito sa picture niyo naka-mute kayo. So, pa-double check na lang po. Kanina, we were hearing you well. Ayan, yan. Okay na po. Uh, Malina na po. What, yes. uh... Kung anong portion po nawala? Yeah, what portion? Uh, around shortly after yung communication skills natin. Uh, Doon siya nasimula mawalan na ating audio. So, uh, share po uli natin yung screen kanina. Uh, same procedure lang. Doon po natin. Okay. 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 
So, viewers, again, send in your questions. Nga would be a good, good time para mag-isip ng ating question para kay Miss Anna. Thank you rin sa ating mga viewers na alatang nag-pay attention, napansin nyo, na comment nyo agad na nawalan din kayo ng audio sa side ninyo. So, thank you very much for being active. Kahit na hindi naman siya question, just uh, sending these comments, napakita na, na, ano, na you're here with us. We still appreciate yung mga ganyan. So, thank you. And Miss Anna, yes, uh, we could see your screen again. Pa full screen na lang, nandun tayo sa around parameters of communication. So, baka balikan lang very quickly yung uh, details na. Tapos pa full screen na lang again, Miss Anna. Kanina, it, uh, full screen siya. And now, okay. Okay. So, I'll see you later again oh, for that Q&A. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. So, um, as I've mentioned, so I'm not sure where um, I was get, uh, I was cut off. But uh, as, as mentioned, siguro the meat of uh, communication skill is yung the ability for you to communicate what you're trying to say. Uh, basically, yung, yung how, how you express your ideas and how it is being understood by the receiver. Okay? So, um, ang pinaka-important bullet on the parameters of communication, at least uh, for, for most of the interviewers when we are hiring for fresh graduates, because again, we're not really expecting you guys to be an expert in pronunciation, in grammar, uh, in vocabulary. You would definitely, most of you would have very limited vocabularies pa. Uh, kasi it takes practice talaga. It, it takes a certain level of comfortability before you can, um, before you can uh, fully grasp the, uh, the, the context of, of communication. But uh, ang pinaka-importante is yung naiintindihan ka ng uh, kausap mo. Okay? So moving on, uh, the next uh, skill that we are looking for for fresh graduates, basic skills, would be problem-solving skills. So um, it is defined as the ability to find solutions to difficult or complex issues. So um, we understand that, you know, uh, technically fresh graduates nga, so wala pa talagang uh, work experience. But yung ability nyo to... Um, to really find solutions. So we're looking for somebody who has the skill to, uh, who is, sorry, who is more on solutions focus rather than focusing on the problem itself. So uh, most of the companies used to uh, use methods on, on how we can fully screen this. So I'm, I'm just going to share this with you so that maiintindihan uh, nyo what we are looking for. So we usually use the bar or star method. So ano ba tong bar or star method? So BAR stands for uh, background, um, action, and result. And then STAR uh, stands for situation, task, action, and result. So basically, um, meron tong, like during an interview, uh, I'm not sure if you've had, you know, experience, you, you know, doing mock interviews or what, but we would always ask for situations uh, that you've had experience before. So for example, have you had any experience in dealing with a difficult professor or uh, having issues with uh, your team members uh, creating a project or something like that. So, ang minimeasure namin dito is uh, how, how you construct yung, yung scenarios sa, sa isip mo. So, of course, dapat organize din yun kasi hindi naman pwedeng sabihin mo na ah, yeah, actually, I had an uh, parang I, I had a an issue before with, with my with my teammate na hindi niya ginawa yung project niya uh, or hindi niya ginawa yung part niya tapos yung gulo-gulo yung gulo-gulo yung kwento mo so um siguro to to better uh, answer those types of questions you you always keep in mind yung etong method na to so you start with the background ano ba yung ano ba yung situation and then yung action ano ba yung ginawa mo uh, para ma-resolve yung situation na yun. And then result, uh, ano yung naging result ng action mo. So very simple, right? Very basic, very simple, pero, pero very crucial siya uh, when being interviewed uh, for a certain job. 
Okay, so uh, again, uh, this this type of uh, this type of method is being used to measure your problem solving skills, and at the same time, it also measures how organized your thoughts are. Uh, kasi yun nga, yung hindi para hindi siya sangay sangay, kumbaga, hindi siya sanga sanga yung ideas mo. Kasi if you, if your ideas are all over the place, then definitely mag uh, magsa suffer yung first skill mo, which is yung communication. So next skill would be um, professionalism. So um, again, very basic. Uh, it's the definition is uh, professionalism is the state or practice of doing one's job with skill, competence, ethics, and courtesy. It is shown by people who take their work seriously and respect the people they work with. So I guess the very important uh, things to note here is the last. Uh, last sentence which is it is shown by people who take their work seriously and respect the people they work with so um, why is this very important for employers um kasi syempre uh, for, for somebody who doesn't who doesn't have experience yet we are taking the risk of employing you right so we want to we want to make sure that when uh, when we take you in in our organization you would take all the tasks or roles seriously, right? And you would respect whoever you work with. So regardless if uh, it's within your department, it's within your group, or outside of your department. Like for example, uh, you are assigned in, in HR, for example. Um, definitely, you're going to be working with your IT department, your sales department, or engineering department, right? So... Um, regardless kung sino yung kasama mo, uh, you respect them. Okay? Uh, even the guards, right? Uh, even the people in, in, in the canteen or the pantry, you would respect, you, you would show them respect. Okay? Uh, because they are treated not uh, somebody who is lower than you, but rather they should be treated as your co-workers. Okay? So examples of professionalism. Um, being on time on scheduled appointments. So again, very basic. I think sa school naman din, um, this is being practiced. So bakit siya example ng professionalism? Because you respect the time of the people that you're gonna have meetings with, right? So for example, uh, sinabi mo that uh, the meeting time is at 8. So uh, it's better that you, ha you be there. Um, it's either uh, on the dot or hopefully prior the appointment. So para yung mga, like for example, right now we have online meetings, um, you, you make sure that you dial ahead of time, dial in ahead of time. Bakit? Kasi there might be, tulad ng nangyari sa atin kanina, there might be um, technical issues. Uh, so that you settle those issues um, ahead of time na, uh, bago pa yung actual meeting itself. Para pagdating ng actual meeting itself, tuloy-tuloy na, right? Okay, another example is responding back when being asked or greeted. So, um, para hindi din naman tayo magmukhang suplada, right? So, pag, for example, um, the guard, when you come in, would say, good morning, ma'am. Um, courtesy na lang din that you respond back, good morning, right? So, wag naman yung masungit, right? Especially with emails, if, uh, if it is directed to you, um, we expect that, of course, we, we get a timely answer, okay? And the last would be doing more than what is expected. So, um, siguro this is uh, more of a stretch na, uh, but especially for fresh graduates kasi, um, siguro a, a, a tip lang din na you don't stick to uh, the role that is being assigned to you. So, if for example, some something... Uh, sparks your interest. Like, for example, again, you are assigned in, say, for example, in, in IT, uh, you're doing uh, troubleshooting and, and whatnot, or programming. Uh, tapos, uh, there's an email blast from, from the HR department that, you know, we are looking for volunteers to, you know, to help us set up uh, sports fest, for example. And it interests you. So it shouldn't stop you from being, uh, it shouldn't stop you from, from volunteering kasi 
um, interest mo yon. So parang sa parang sa you take it similar as uh, your clubs sa in your respective universities, right? So for example, hindi naman ibig sabihin na hindi ka galing sa sports related course, hindi ka na pwedeng sumali sa sports, yes, right? So hindi naman ibig sabihin na hindi ka major in music, hindi ka na pwedeng sumali sa choral, right? So sim- ganun din, parehas lang din siya sa work uh, sa, sa workplace na we also have other departments where you can help din naman. And, and definitely, any help would be appreciated. Okay? Okay. So, uh, I think this is my last slide, uh, which talks about teamwork and collaboration. So, um, why is it very important? Because, uh, again, you're not, you're not just going to be working by yourself, right? So, we would expect somebody who, who should be able to work as a team. So, siguro to define lang, what's the difference? Because you keep on hearing these two words, uh, being clubbed together, right? Clumped together, rather. So that's teamwork and collaboration. So ano ba yung definition? Ano ba yung di- difference nila? So teamwork, um, teamwork is a combined action of a group of people towards a common goal. And then collaboration is the process of two or more people or organizations working together to complete a task or achieve goal. Parang parehas lang, right? But siguro to, to better understand that, um, yung teamwork, uh, look at it as, for example, um, nasiraan yung isang nasiraan yung isang uh, kotse, for example. Um, uh, si si employee one nagtutulak siya, si employee two dumating nagtulak din, employee three dumating nagtulak din. So technically pare parehas silang nang ginagawa para mapa in order to achieve one goal, which is mapaandar yung sirang kotse. Right? And then, that, so technically, that's teamwork. And then, collaboration naman. Uh, so, taking the, the, the similar scenario, sira yung kotse. So, si team, sorry, si employee one, nagtutulak, dumating si employee two na mekaniko, ah, sige, tignan natin yung, uh, tignan natin yung, uh, what do you call this, yung, yung machine, baka may sira siya or something. Tapos si employee 3 naman would, would come in again and, okay, sige, um, doon ako sa loob, tatry kong i-jumpstart or something. So, technically, iba-iba sila ng ginagawa. Iba-iba sila ng expertise. Pero, technically, the, the goal is still one. It's still, it's still to make the, the, the car work. Right? So, nakita niyo yung difference. So, teamwork, iisa lang yung ginagawa nila. So, tinutulungan lang nila yung isang tao uh, to do the same task para to achieve one goal. Tinutulungan lang kita. But in collaboration, I have my own skill set. Uh, I have my own um, I have my own task to do. Uh, and then, pag pinagsama-sama mo yun, that would achieve our goal. So, that's basically, that's the difference. But in essence, kaya siya pinagsasama kasi um, mala- malapit lang naman yung difference nila. But uh, if hihimay-himayin mo lang yung definition, dun lang makikita yung difference. So I, I think do- yun lang naman yung uh, difference nila. But technically, it's-, it's still the same. So why is it important in, uh, again, in-, in looking for a job, in looking for a role? So sabi ko nga, you're not just gonna be working by yourself. Uh, kasi hindi mo naman dala-dala yung buong organization when we hire you, right? Um, you're gonna be working with different people, you're gonna be working with different um, different departments, different people with different skill set, different personalities. So, it's very important that we help each other out. Kasi, uh, again, iisa lang naman yung goal natin. It's to, uh, it's it's for the betterment of the company para masustain yung services ng company, right? Um, yun lang yung goal natin when you get hired for a specific uh, for a specific job or a specific career. So, um, it's better that, you know, at the onset, you know how to work as a team and collaborate. Okay? So, um, I, I think that's it for, uh, for my discussion. 
unless you guys have any questions. Thank you, Miss Anna. Our question is taking uh, from your last slide, nyo, which is on uh, collaboration, teamwork, and collaboration. A question is, as a fresh grad, anong pwedeng gawin nila when there is a conflict? How could they handle conflicts at team when it's uh, yung sa teamwork and collaboration ay uh, magdakaka negative effect na on this? Anong pwedeng gawin natin? Yeah. So, um, kasi depende din yun sa personality. I can't really say that there would be, uh, you know, uh, parang a right fit or, uh, or a generic approach on, on how to confront uh, pag may mga ganyang issues. But um, ideally, you would, you know, you would single out, for example, in a certain team, kanari si team 1, saka si team, team 2, merong issue. Uh, idea you, you 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 really talk to the person and identify kung uh, ano yung nagiging problema but if you know you're not the type of person who uh, who can uh, siguro who can confront people uh, kasi when you say confrontation hindi naman yung confrontation na away agad right so it's really more of like a mature discussion between two people right pwedeng ganun eh uh, pero if hindi nila talaga kaya, hindi sila yung confrontational type of person, they can always reach out to their immediate supervisor. If it's if it's a if it's an environment na yung trabaho na. But uh, again, if if sa ano naman, if sa similarly kapag ka sa sa setting naman ng school, di ba? Who do you reach out to? You reach out to your teachers, right? You reach out to your guidance counselor to mediate. Parang ganyan. So Similarly, sa, sa work naman, ganun din. But it's it's mainly driven by um, or, or being moderated by the, the supervisors or the manager. Thank you, Ms. Anna. We actually have here a question or a reaction saying uh, by Sir Noel Cabellon, a good teamwork shows good communication. Am I right? So yes, good teamwork and good communication. Yes, that is correct. What can you say pa po dito, Ms. Anna, about having good communication and good teamwork? Yeah, kasi um, si teamwork kasi uh, very very crucial din yung communication. Actually, very, kaya nga yun yung inuna ko kasi that's, that's one of the, uh, sabi ko nga ba one of the important things. Kasi si communication can drive a lot of things. Uh, one is, with, one is uh, good teamwork kasi nga, uh, when you have when you want to have a good team or at least yung yung uh, magkaroon ka ng magandang um, relationship with your team you should have open communication so and um, together with professionalism kasi when you say open communication baka ito yung very honest na kayo in, in everything tapos not really considering yung feelings na ng, ng bawat isa so very important naman you always go back to your core values din naman kasi as 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 a human right um communication is very important uh, uh in in all aspects of relationship be it sa trabaho be it sa personal it's very important but you also have to take into consideration uh, yung yung values mo as as tao Thank you, Ms. Anna. Our last question is about tong developing nitong skills na ito. Hindi kasi siya yung usual na pwedeng maaral basta-basta. How is the best way to develop these types of skills like problem-solving skills? Hindi naman tayo problem-solving na we are used to yung mga math, ganun. So what could we do to develop these types of skills? Correct. So um, actually, uh, funny in that before, when, when we were still studying, or at least I was still studying, Akala ko din yung mga math, uh, especially if you're going to be pursuing a career in behavioral science, um, like for example, psychology, parang ano ba yung importance ng math na yan, diba? So, ba importance yan? Ba't ako pinahihirapan ng math? Ayoko ng math. I hate math, right? Pero when you look at it, it's not really more of the, the numbers that's important in, in solving math problems. It's how you analyze so yun kasi yung yun kasi yung importante doon. So, di ba when you analyze, when you when you do problem solving in in a math uh, math subject, 
'di ba, naka-essay form siya, 'di ba? Tapos bibigyan kanya ng kung ano-anong. For example, if if I have 10 apples, I gave five away. Ganyan, parang how many is left? Ganyan. So, iisipin mo, mag, nandun yung nandun yung train of thought mo eh. Parang ano ba yung una? Okay, meron na kung 10 apples. Tapos nawala yung lima, right? So similarly, sa scenario naman ng sa scenario naman ng everyday life mo, for example, paano ako papasok ngayong pandemic na walang example, ganun yung problema mo. Uh, ngayong wala yung or, or very limited yung transportation. Okay. So ano ba yung you identify the problem, yun yung problema, right? Wala akong transportation. Second, ano ba yung options ko? Pwede akong mag-shuttle via kung ano yung benefit ng employer. Second, baka pwede, meron akong pwede sa bayan. ba? Third, baka pwede akong magbisikleta. Yung mga ganyan. Yung mga ganyang option. So, um, it's merely how you process the problem. That's important. Uh, that's, that's how you, that's how you, um, that's how you practice your problem solving skills. Kasi, as compared to, uh, okay, limited yung masasakyan ko, hala, hindi na ako makakapasok. Right? Nag-give up na agad. Or, hala, tatawag na ako sa manager ko, ma'am, pwede na ba ako mag-work from home? Kasi hindi ako makapasok ngayon, wala akong makapasok. So, compare that to the first scenario wherein nag-iisip ka kung ano yung mga possible solutions. Right? So, that's basically, hindi lang siya, hindi lang siya sa math problems. You can, you can apply it, you know, in, in your everyday lives on how you on how you enhance the uh, your problem solving skills with communication naman um with communication skills uh, i can say it's best to um practice talaga communicating in english um again we're not looking for somebody who's very perfect uh in terms of communicating in english but uh, it would also help if you watch a lot of um English movies, um, series, and you read a lot of books. Kasi yung books talaga would help you uh, broaden your vocabulary a lot. So, thank you, Ms. Anna, para sa ating mga viewers. Hopefully, meron din kayong extra appreciation ngayon sa inyong mga math problems na tinitingnan. <laughs> it's about how you analyze the problem as well. Kasi kung simula pa lang, maling problema na tinitingnan nyo or start pa lang mali na yung ina-address nyo, Uh, na binibigay ng solution, wala na may rata na kayo. Thank you for that, Miss Anna. I think that is our last question for today. To our viewers, if you want to know more about HGS, you could go to johnson80.com slash teamhgs. Doon nyo makikita ang more details about the company and a few of their job openings. So thank you very much, Miss Anna. Hope we can have you again soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we can move on to our last topic. It is about your after-graduation checklist. So to introduce our speaker, so yeah, I'm going to talk about this after-graduation checklist. So which means kapag graduate kayo, ano dapat meron na kayo to begin with. So I would like to introduce our speaker. He is from Emerson, Philippines. And he is Sir Michael Lim, talent sourcing and branding leader of Emerson Philippines. He has over 16 years of professional experience in different facets of human resources, designing, implementing recruitment solutions and initiatives for Fortune 500,000. So uh, I would like to introduce Mr. Michael Lim. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Sir Mike? Hi, good morning. Good morning, sir. I am waiting for your video to load. I could hear you. Kaso parang naka-black pa yung screen nyo. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, medyo choppy po kayo sa side ko. All right there. I could see you now. Can we test your audio? Okay. Medyo choppy po, but it's getting better. Okay, so view ko, sir. Sorry, mo na freeze ang inyong video. And wala akong audio na nakukuha. 
So uh, while Sir Mike is sorting out its own uh, issues, technical issues, so I would like to point out again that the after graduation checklist is what you would be needing before kayo mag apply sa jobs, which is why where the resume link will come from. Because after graduation, bago kayo mag apply anywhere, you would be needing a resume. So resume link, the video na pinakita namin kanina, yung talk dun sa first na session natin. But you can look at that. You can make use of this tool. We highly recommend it para makapag-apply kayo as part of your after-graduation checklist. Usually, nandyan dapat ang inyong resume. So, na natin patagalin. You can start making your resume. Uh, fill up na tayo sa resume link natin. So, Sir Mike, I can see your video again. Sorry, sir. Medyo choppy pa rin kayo no. sa akin. I'm not sure if yun din ang na experience ng ating viewers and mukhang naka-freeze uli ang inyong video. Although kanina naman nung nag-dry run tayo, everything was working well. Right now, may lang tayo technical issues ulit. So, while again, Sir Mike is sorting this out, would like to remind our viewers na second session to but we will be having another one next week if I'm not mistaken. Para sa ating third session, different topics. So let's try again with Sir Mike. Mukhang naglalag din po pati sa ating mga viewers. May isang nag-comment that uh, naglalag sa kanilang part. So let's try a, a bit. Copy yan, sabi nag-agree po ang ating mga viewers. Double check pa lang po ang pwede natin gawin. Okay, uh, Sir Mike, dahil naka-freeze kayo, uh, try muna natin i-handle yung issue backstage. For now, mag-show muna. Uli kami ng video ng resume. Step 1. Register. Go to www.jobsonaid.com and click register now. In choosing your resume link, use your full name so that it looks professional and is easy to recall by potential employers and fill out the other information needed. Register, go to your email address and validate your jobs180.com account to activate. Step 2. Complete your resume link. When creating your resume link, make sure to complete your personal and contact information, your profile picture, and your cover photo. You can also put your objectives, work options, work experience, certifications, achievements, skills and languages, references, and portfolio. Your resume link also features different themes and a cover photo. Step 3. Submit your resume link. If you're qualified, click Submit Resume Link or you can even share the job vacancy with your friends. You can also apply for jobs outside Jobs180.com by sending your resume link through any platform.
register. Complete and submit your resume link. So what are you waiting for? Turn your life around by creating your own resume link and applying for your dream job. Okay, after our commercial alert, testing alin natin ang connection ng ating speaker. Nandiyan po ba kayo, sir? Okay, naglo-load ang kanyang video. And nakablank pa rin. Ayan, naglo-load na ulit. So, hintay lang natin si Sir Mike para sa ating mga viewers. Thank you for staying. Thank you again for your participation. I counted as participation kahit sinabi niyo lang is naglalag din sa inyo. Thank you pa rin. I appreciate pa rin yung mga ganyan messages. So, Hi. Sir Mike, testing ulit natin. Good morning. Ayan, okay na sir. Good morning sir. So, testing naman natin sir ang inyong share screen bago tayo matuloy. Mukhang okay naman na ang audio and video from your end. And okay na Thank rin, nakaload na rin ang inyong screen. Okay, so, great. sir, as usual, meron tayong Q&A after this, after ng inyong talk. I will be back para sa ating Q&A. Hopefully, ang ating mga audience ay viewers sa ating audience ay mag comment na kanilang question. So, thank you, sir. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good morning, RTU students, uh, to my co-speakers, and thank you, jobs180.com, for inviting me today. Um, I am very excited to share with all of you some guiding behaviors that would help you become successful in any chosen career you may have as you graduate no, or progress in your life and career. I know that it's a difficult time to all of us, especially there's fear and uncertainty every day because of what the pandemic has brought us. But we Filipinos are resilient, right? And we can easily adapt to any challenges because of our values. So my topic this morning will revolve around that, about values. No? Because I would like to share with all of you what we believe in Emerson, the most important values you should have in achieving your goals. And later on, uh, I will also explain why our organization chose those, these values. Okay, so now let me, uh, let me take some time to share with you seven core values that are important to Emerson. And these are guiding behaviors. If you want to become successful, not just in Emerson, no, uh, but also when you apply to other companies. So, um, so I'm sure you guys are ready. Uh, let's start no, with the first value. So I think we should move on to the next slide. Um, another slide, please. Okay. The first uh, value is integrity. All right. So this is very important. This is a very important value for Emerson because we believe that if a person has high regard to integrity and ethical behavior, we would have uh, full confidence in entrusting critical roles or function to that person. Now, I just want to share with you some guiding behaviors in relation to integrity. No? Uh, someone who acts as a role model and is seen as direct, truthful, and ethical. Now, if you want to aspire to become a leader in the future, and you need to be seen as a person whom they can trust, alam nyo ba guys na many leaders fail because they are not trustworthy. And that is very true. Even if they are really good in what they do, functionally, pero once na erode na yung integrity nila, nahihirapan na sila i-rebuild or i-build up yung kanilang credibility. Another is someone who follows through on commitments and makes sure others do the same. Yeah. Um, another thing uh, that I would like to share about integrity is someone who takes personal responsibility for decisions actions, and mistakes, meaning you own up your own mistakes and accept criticisms. You are not afraid to say, sorry, it was my fault, and trying not to cover up your mistakes. Kasi, minsan ako tayo magkamali, di ba? Pinatatakpan natin yung mga maling bagay. And uh, I think that uh, shows also integrity of the person. And lastly, someone who is not afraid to address difficult issues and supports others who do the same. So um, that is our first value that I would like to share with you. Now, the next important value is, if uh, we can move on to the next slide, safety and quality. Okay, 
This is very timely because everybody thinks about health and safety, diba? In everything we do now, um, we always think of safety, like safe ba lumabas, safe ba travel, and the list will go on. Even before the pandemic, we have a certain degree of regard to safety, but it became more and more evident when the pandemic hit all of us. The, this attitude is very important when joining an organization, any organization, especially now, because we want to make sure that all our peers or colleagues in the organization would have a strong sense of safety, not just for themselves, but also for the entire organization. Now, here are some guiding behaviors in relation to safety and quality. Um, someone who demonstrates personal commitment to a safety and quality culture. This is very straightforward, guys, because safety and quality culture should already be in our system or it should be embedded in our, in our DNA, meaning our actions should always translate to making sure we have a, a safe work environment. Another is someone who pushes self and helps others to follow safety and quality standards. This is not just the role of a supervisor. So this is everybody's role. Creating an environment that is safe for everybody is very important now. Diba? So lahat tayo, we should uh, give our contribution uh, in to have a safe work environment. And another would be someone who establishes clear responsibilities and processes for monitoring work. And lastly, identifies and addresses general root causes to safety and quality problems. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the next value, which is support our people. Ayan. This, is, this specific value is not just applicable for leaders, okay? The word support, giving your whole support drives success to the organization. And this is very uh, important, you know. Example, if, you, if the company launched an initiative or programs for employees, you are always open to give your support. Now, let me give you an ex a specific example. You know, uh, siyempre, someone who communicates clearly and frequently to promote transparency and understanding. You being open and honest is a way of supporting the organization. You give your suggestions, you take part, you take part on different activities, and be present is a way of support, diba? Making your presence felt. Yan. Another is uh, someone who actively develops people through coaching, continuous feedback, and challenging assignments. Now, um, definitely if you want to become uh, a leader in the future, uh, developing their people would require a lot of time spending with them. Ito, another failure ng isang leader, no? Um, because they don't spend time with their people. Meaning, hindi nila nag, hindi sila nagbibigay ng time to develop. So, um, this is very important in developing uh, their peers, their, their, their people. Another is encourages and values the open expression of diverse ideas and opinion. Meaning, you should be open to other um, suggestions, to different ideas from different backgrounds, from different, uh, from different uh, departments, you know. Um, and also someone who is committed to making a positive, positive impact on the communities where we live and work. Now, Emerson is known for its slogan, you know, making an impact to the world because of the solutions we provide to our customers. So uh, later on, I'll um, try to give you more inf information about that. Okay. Now, let's proceed to another value that is important to Emerson. And that is customer focus. Ayan. Um, eto, the, the, I have here some examples that I would like to share with you. Um, we're looking for someone who can attentively listen to customers to gain insight into their needs and response with, the, with a sense of urgency. You are also interested to know what they need. But in other words, you care genuinely and there's willingness to help others. Ayan. Another is someone who builds and delivers solutions that meet or exceed customer expectations. Another is establishes and maintains effective relationships. And lastly, responsibly stewards the industry in addressing challenging policies, practices, and trends in the marketplace. Okay. Now, next... Uh, another important value that is important to Emerson is continuous improvement. Ito, straightforward din itong um, value na to eh. Because um, definitely we're looking for someone who seeks ways to improve from small tweaks to completing re-engineering, di ba? Extracts lessons learned from failures and mistakes, di ba? Hindi tayo takot um, magkamali and then we learn from our mistakes. Consistently driven 
to, uh, to identify and seize new opportunities for improvement, and also monitoring progress. This is very important in continuous improvement because we want to know if we are really improving, diba? So how would you know uh, if you are progressing? And, and that is through monitoring progress, diba? Or if we want, if you, if you, um, if you, if what we, if you want to know if what we are doing is helping us improve by monitoring our progress. Now, let's go on to the next um, value. The next value that I would like to talk about is, ito, uh, collab. Ito pala, ko narinig to sa mga vloggers. You know? In other words, collaboration. Okay, in fact, this is one of my favorite values because in collaboration, it can hit almost all the rest of the values I mentioned a while ago. Uh, because you will not be able to collaborate effectively if the people you would like to work with don't trust you, number one, if they don't feel safe with you, it also if they think they cannot get support from you, you don't listen, you're not cooperative, and the list will go on. So connect it with the rest of the values because in order for you to be collaborative, maraming factors that you need to consider to become successful. Now let me just give you some examples. Uh, someone who works proactively with others across the organization. Again, um, someone who understands that trust and support are two-way interactions. So, hindi siya one-way interaction lang. Ano. Uh, equally learned, equally earned and given. Embraces diverse experiences, styles, backgrounds, and uh, perspectives to get results. And also builds strong formal and informal networks to facilitate an exchange of uh, ideas. Because there are some... Uh, groups who can easily uh, extract information through a formal gathering or through an informal um, gathering as well. No? And lastly, ito, ito na, nandito na tayo sa last um, um, value that I would like to share this morning. And uh, it's innovation. Ayan. If we learn to have an innovator's mindset, meaning someone who who discovers meaningful opportunities through insights into customers' needs when you are interested to explore and unearth, you know, other things, you know, takes and accepts risks by being a champion of creative ideas, accurately anticipates future trends in emerging technologies, and creates competitive and breakthrough strategies. Um, but before you become an innovator, you need to be really interested regardless of your chosen field, be in technology, engineering, finance, medicine, as long as you have the desire to make an impact through innovation. So now that you've learned the seven core values of Emerson, I want you to reflect and assess yourselves if you think you'll be able to check all the boxes. And I hope that your values are also the same or aligned as with Emerson's. If these are the values important to a company, definitely ito rin yung mga behaviors that they will look for when hiring someone in their organization. So it's really important that you understand their values before applying for a job or at least attending an interview para you have something to say diba? and share. Understanding corporate values is very important, especially when you look for a company that you work for long term. Your success kasi relies on it. Uh, your success in the organization rely on the values you both believe in. Parang mag-boyfriend lang yan and mag-girlfriend, di ba? You assess, and then if you guys are compatible. So, ganun din ang paghahanap ng kumpanya. So, it's a, learn, it's a long journey. Okay. Um, I just have a couple of slides to show you about our company. Um, maybe we, we can proceed to the next slide. Ayan. Uh, I just wanted to share with you um, Emerson, you know. Um, Emerson, uh, we were founded in 1890, you know, and we're based in St. Louis, Missouri in the United States. Uh, you can see some of the recognitions we earned, like uh, yung Fortune 500, we're part of America's largest corporations by, by revenue. And then uh, you can see the two business platforms, uh, automation solutions and commercial and residential solutions. Um, right now, we are 88,000 strong workforce globally with 200 manufacturing locations worldwide. And then I mentioned a while about innovation, no? kasi yan yung isa sa mga key values ni Emerson. We continuously improve and try to discover new technologies. So kung makikita nyo naman, um, every year, meron kaming mga active patents. So last year, 20,000. 
active patents yung meron si Emerson ano. And then also you can see here our global sales and then uh, 63 consecutive years of increased dividends and uh, um, we are a publicly registered company in the New York Stock Exchange. The next slide will show you naman our global presence. So you can see here that uh, we are pre pretty much everywhere. Uh, we're present in US and Canada, Latin America, Europe, Middle East and Africa and Asia. So here in Asia, um, uh, actually, ito yung pinakamalaking population ni Emerson compared to U.S. and Canada combined. And lastly, um, the slide that I would like to show you is our presence here in the Philippines. Okay, so um, Emerson is a shared services, and um, we've been here for uh, for more than ten years. You know, and you can see here some of the shared services capabilities. Uh, like uh, pre, post sale support, life cycle services, general customer care, order management, product design and engineering, and of course we have back office activities. Ayan, yung mga operations, legal, IT, human resources, finance, and supply chain. So, ayan. So that's all about my presentation this morning. And if you um, if you would like to uh, apply for a job at Emerson, you can go to our website, and also uh, you can go to if you have your resume link, you can go to jobs180.com slash Emerson Electric. So now I, I think I'm open to your questions. Hello, sir, Mike. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. I think I'm going to log Sir, our first question is... Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Malino kayo sa akin? Okay ba ako sa inyo? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Yes, sir. So, our first question, when it comes to applying sa Emerson, you showed kanina yung opening show. When it comes to applying, ano ang um, necessary na requirements that our uh, applicant should have? Aside from yung sa resume, I think na mention ko kanina first step is they should have a resume ano pa po ang ibang kailangan na meron sila para maka-apply mm, okay so simple lang naman yung requirements namin when applying for a job uh, aside from the resume so um, since we are now uh, doing virtual application so we would require all our applicants to register on our website where we um, through the the resumes, so and that's where we um, kasi important na mag meron silang when they access them and eventually pag hinayar namin sila it would be easier for us to onboard uh, um, the new hires so yun aside from the resume of course yung pag register and then yung pag go through nila dun sa, sa application process which would be yung um, they would go through a series of exa a series of interviews and then some some of some of our roles would require examination online exam so basically Wait, yun lang naman tapos yeah what about sir yung mga requirements na usually ni ng mga companies when it comes to yung government uh, requirements yung mga sss pagibig can you share more about it? Oh yes, that is part of onboarding. So once they are identified for a specific role in in Emerson, they will be asked to submit pre-employment requirements. Kagaya mo na sabi mo no, yung mga SSS, yung mga pag-ibig feel health. So lahat yon hihingin. Even yung TOR, um, kung fresh graduate naman kasi sila, um, definitely uh, ngayon pa lang sila magre-request ng mga government IDs na yun, ano? So we will assist. We have, a, we have a department that can assist our new hires on how they can uh, um, accomplish yung mga requirements na yun. Even yung mga government, government uh, IDs. Ayan. So... Okay. Sir, for fresh grads ba, uh, humihingi ba kayo ng letter of recommendation? I understand madalas hinihingi since wala pa namang masyadong work experience. So, letter of recommendation usually from their teachers. Meron po bang ganun? Well, not necessarily. Hindi siya um, requirement no, sa amin. But, uh, ang tinitignan namin since fresh graduate sila, yung experience nila nung nag-i-intern sila. So, we take a look at that. Also, 
um, when we interview them kasi we ask them uh, syempre kung ano yung mga bagay that they are they think um, they are interested they, they can excel syempre at saka yung mga titingnan din namin yung kanilang research work aside from their OJT kasi yun yung magiging basis namin eh in assessing them for an entry level role in the organization Yung sa, ano sir, when it comes to yung sa requirements that I mentioned before, yung sa government, yung mga SSS, pag-ibig, still help, na pwede ba mag-apply ang ating applicants while they are still processing this? Hindi pa nila kompleto tong mga to? Okay lang ba mag-apply yes. sila? Yes, definitely. Um, kasama yan sa pre-boarding namin, ano? Uh, while they are still uh, on the process of their application with Emerson, they can... Uh, they can uh, apply at the same time. They can process at the same time yung mga uh, requirements na yun, ano. Kasi kami, before we require them to start on their first day, hihingi na namin lahat ng mga requirements na yun. Yun lang naman yung aming requirement dyan. So, at least before you start with us, with Emerson, kailangan makompleto nyo yung uh, pre-employment requirements. So, kahit tag- napapa-interview pa lang kayo, uh, kung hindi pa kayo kompleto, okay lang yun. Kasi eventually, uh, hihingi din namin sa kanila. Okay. So to our viewers, feel free to apply kahit kahit na kinokompleto niyo pa rin to. Um, for Emerson, halimbawa, uh, you would just need na makompleto lahat ng ito sa bago kayo makapasok mismo. But when it comes to applying, di naman kailangan kompleto pa to. When it comes to getting your interview, first interview, I don't think necessary na kompleto niyo na ito. Again, ito yung mga government-mandated na ating documents, yung SSS, PhilHealth, Pag-ibig, ano pa ba sa yung TINTIN number, yan, for your taxes. Yes. Tapos, usually ang hinihingi ng companies din, um, na-mention ni Sir, um, transcript of records, yan, grades, kasi tinitingnan to from fresh grads. Uh, tama ba, sir, na ang um, transcript, ito sa hinihingi, and kung yes. ano ka important sa pag-process? Yes, that is very true. Um, kailangan yun, uh, yung transcript of records uh, to be submitted even before uh, they they start. Hi, sir. Uh, yung iba, sir, when nagpasa na ng transcript of records, necessary pa rin ba na may diploma? Mag-upload ng diploma. Usually, we receive questions like this and that. Since nandun na yung transcript, important pa ba? Mm-hmm. Separate document ang diploma? Kailan po ba? Hinihingi din namin yung diploma kasi that is part of their uh, 201 file sa amin. Ano? So, uh, apart from that, but of course, important kasi sa amin when uh, uh, parang reference checking with the school, yung TOR. No? Kahit to follow na lang yung diploma. Kahit so, to follow. Ah, pero basta, we, usually hinihingi earlier ang um, TOR. Ang TOR, yes. So, kasi na, yun yung reference namin, yun yung aming reference when checking kung graduate ba yung um, student na yun from that university. So yun yung binibigay namin sa aming uh, vendor for validating the educational background. Hmm. And then yung diploma, okay, so, kahit to follow na lang, pero kailangan pa rin nilang isubmit. Okay. So again, hingin pa rin natin tong mga to ating mga viewers, although mas ma-prioritize ang TOR di ibig sabihin na hindi nyo nakakailangan yun ng diploma. I guess, depende sa company, pero ang best advice talaga is kompletuhin nyo na lahat ng itong usually hinihingi. So, uh, right. next question, sir. Usually kasi, aside from itong pinaka-basic, like yung resume, iba cover letter, and then itong mga government requirements, yung mga SSS, PhilHealth, Pag-ibig, and then sa school requirements man, TOR, diploma, and then, yung iba, government-issued na IDs. Hey, sir, sorry, ilang IDs ang nire-require nyo? Yung iba kasi nahihirapan kumuha ng enough IDs for your application, the government-issued? Uh, for the IDs, ang kailangan namin kasi doon, uh, hindi naman namin kailangan yung physical ID agad. Like, for example, sa BIR, it takes a while before you can be ano, released, di ba, an ID. So, kukunin namin yung, syempre, yung number. Ganun din sa PhilHealth, hihingi din namin yung number ng feel health ninyo. Um, ano pa ba? Sa sa SSS, ganun din. Hihingin din namin yung number nyo sa SSS. Hindi naman namin i-require agad-agad yung mga physical IDs nun. So, okay, Kasi good point, important sir. Yung, 
for us kasi important lang yung mga number na yon kasi for compens para do sa pag nagre-remit kami, 'di ba? Nagre-remit kami doon sa um, uh, sa SSS, sa BIR, so yun sa PhilHealth. Ayun. Ayun. So to our viewers, pwede yung number muna for now and okay. kasi nga hindi basta-basta nakakuha ng ID and hindi pa naman immediately necessary yung sa pag-process ng HR. Uh, sometimes the numbers would do for now, like sa Emerson, sa other companies, then mas mm-hmm. na-prioritize nila. Uh, but Pero ito, important. Yeah. Pero Sige, here's sir, my advice, no? Here's my advice. As long, kung may time na sila na makapag-process yung mga requirements na yan, as early as now, uh, simula na nila, no? Kasi um, marami kasing mga, medyo, alam naman natin ngayon, we are in a pandemic, di ba? So medyo medyo baka matatagalan yung ibang processing ng mga documents, ng mga requirements. So I suggest um kumpletuhin na natin yung mga requirements na yan as early as now para uh, when the time comes that you will need to submit all these requirements, kahit yung mga IDs na yan ano, kasi sometimes uh, we will require IDs, no, valid IDs to open you uh, a bank account for your payroll. So um at least ready na siya. 'Di ba? Even before you Uh, start your application with your prospective uh, company. So thank you, sir. Sa ating mga viewers, wag nyo sana uh, ma-misunderstand na by saying ko na hindi naman immediately necessary bag na may ID. Ibig sabihin, papatagalin nyo na ang pagkuha nyo ng ID. Tulad ni Sir Mike, uh, sabi ni Sir Mike, kompletuhin na natin agad pag napatagalin just because hindi immediately hinihingi not mean that you could take your time. Manay natin yung sa ibang company or what. Gusto kasi ano, yeah, kasi Robert, alam mo, yan din yung magiging isa sa pa- potential reason kung bakit madedelay yung pag-start ng mga new hires. Oo. Kasi kung halimbawa incomplete ka, may mga employers na mas strict, no? Na baka, o oh, dahil hindi ka complete, hindi ka pa pwede magsastart. So, ayun. Yan. So, well, ating mga viewers, ayos siyempre natin na madelay pa, bakit pa natin papatagalin, matatagal pa dahil lang hindi natin ginawa itong pagkuha ng ating requirements na dito sa kailangan natin after graduation na hindi natin ginawa agad, madelay tuloy later on. Sayang naman yung time, sayang yung doing everything sa interview and all, tapos may gap in between dahil lang hindi natin kompleto ang ating requirements. Pero uh, isa sa mga uh, usual recommendation when it comes to dito sa what we call yung after graduation checklist aside from to mga documents is yung having yung taken short courses at yung mga short courses kasi nadadagdag siya sa resume. Doon sa pag-mention nyo kanina in connection doon sa uh, values na na-mention nyo, meron po ba kayang mga short course online or what na ma- they will have a better understanding of yung mga gatong basing values. Well, you know what? Uh, kasi yung values kasi, ano eh, hindi naman agad-agad natutunan na through attending short courses, you know. Naka-embed na yun sa pagkatao ng tao, di ba? So, it's just a matter of understanding what are the most important values nung kumpanya na yun. So, meaning, if, uh, if you... Uh, Once na malaman mo kung ano yung mga values that are important to them, and if you think na those are the values that are also important to you, um, parang sin- ini- na- nakikita mo na nagmamatch kayo, di ba? So you are, parang, parang mas malaki yung chance mo na, oh, mapapa-interview ako dito because uh, um, we share the same values, di ba? Now, if you think you lack some of the values, you think you lack um, on some areas, syempre, you will have to ask yourself and assess Um, can I can I uh, can I improve on this specific value, di ba? Let's say, for example, innovation. Ayan. Sa innovation kasi, this is something that, uh, kasi you should be interested. You should be interested to innovate, to to learn. Uh, you should have that um, burning passion to you, to to, um, to try new things, di ba? And uh, come up with something better. So, it's an attitude, it's a behavior that you should develop. Diba? Nasa sayo pa rin yun. Ano? Kahit umaten ka ng umaten ng mga webinar about innovation, pero kung ikaw mismo, parang um, okay ka na sa kung ano yung meron ka. Diba? Um, parang nasa sayo pa rin yun. You will, uh, you will still have to discover that 
yourself. So um, I I think hindi siya nakukuha sa mga sa mga pag-attend sa mga webinar or sa mga pag-attend sa mga online courses. Uh, you should be able to discover that yourself. Okay, so in connection, sir, uh, I'm glad to see na ang ating viewers may mga questions about dito sa learning more about uh, values. May have some question from Miss Ira May Villaflor. If I said that correctly, Ira May Villaflor. Ano pong difference between integrity and honesty? Okay, sa integrity kasi, um, it is something that uh, it's a it's a value kasi no it's a value that is in you parang pag may, pag is someone is not looking diba ibig sabihin um, and then uh, you are doing the right thing that is integrity diba nasa sarili mo yon diba and and people can see that yung honesty kasi diba when you are being asked let's say for example um ikaw bang gumawa nito you telling the truth parang being truthful to what you say yun yung honesty kasi yung integrity kasi is something that uh, is innate in you and then yung honesty yung being honest to what you say um honest ka ba dun sa mga bagay na tinatanong sa yo are you trying to are you trying to uh, pa- paligot li- paligoy ligoy di ba so yun yung uh, yun yung difference ng integrity and honesty okay so Miss Lila Flor, sana na-address to ni Sir. Meron ako isa pang question here from Miss Rovelin B. Pagbilaw. Did I say that correctly? The question is, which do you think will be more effective for students or for already working given our situation? It is a collaboration. Yan, yan po, naka-flash po sa ating screen. Ang question so, nila. which do you think will be more effective for students Uh, or for already working given our situation. Okay, kasi ngayon, di ba, we are in um, in a pandemic, di ba? So, lahat tayo uh, virtual. For me, ang pinaka-important dito, really, well, tama ka doon. Ako, yan yung isa sa pinaka-important, yun yung pinaka-favorite uh, value kasi yung collaboration. Yung working well with others. Uh, kasi, k- kanina na-mention ko na um, yung collaboration, nahihit niya yung iba't ibang values right so if um kung people don't trust you if they don't feel safe about you if they feel na you will not be supportive if they feel na wala kang makokontribute di ba how do you think uh, you can be collaborative so um, for me um, if you have that uh, mindset of, uh, of a collaborator di ba of a of yung collaboration I think yun yung, yun yung pinaka, for me, ah, ako yan yung pinaka-effective for students. And of course, you need to uh, to learn that skill or that value. Um, kasi hindi agad-agad no, na tututunan yan. May, may mga graduates tayo dyan na mahiyain, di ba? We also have graduates uh, who doesn't um, give out their um, their thoughts or uh, they, who doesn't who doesn't speak their minds, parang it takes some time before they get to to do that no? or discover that themselves. But uh, if you, um, kung makita mo yung aking seven uh, checklist, no, yung values, uh, if you think that you have all those, uh, much better, no? Kasi that will fast track you uh, when you apply for a job. You know? Magkaroon ka ng self-confidence, eh. Oh, I have all these values and I think I can give you examples how I... Uh, How I how I uh, how I show these values, diba? Okay, thank you, sir. Um, uh, pagbilas. Hopefully, na address ni sir ang ating question. So, sir, uh, thank you very much. That's it. Yan ang ating last question that we need to address para sa ating mga viewers na gusto mas lalong makilala si Emerson. You can go to jobs180.com/emersonelectric. Meron din details about the company and uh, job openings, if ever. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, that's it for today. Hopefully, we can see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So to our viewers, ito na ang ating last topic for today. Wrap up uh, tatlong topics today, pero magkakaroon pa tayo soon. 
next week may tatlo pa last week na tatlo so total of nine topics for you thank you very much for uh collaborating with us in school officials ng RTU for getting us to do this for you thank you very much uh with that said gusto ko lang ulit mag thank you sa inyo viewers uh sa inyo rather kasi i've been monitoring ang count natin viewers and more or less same naman from start till finish meaning nandiyan lang kayo so thank you very much hope to see you again soon para dun sa na late or not available today pwede nyo sabihan na ipopost namin itong recording itong live version sa aming Facebook page so visit our Facebook page like news para may update kayo sa aming mga next webinars na invited din kayo so thank you This closes our program today. Once again, this is Robert from Jobs 180. Stay safe, everyone. See you soon and goodbye.